from Ellesmere and is quite twisty, avoiding a large outcrop of rock. Holiday Lodges hug the apex of a bend near Bridge 65 and it's from here we get lovely views across the Shropshire Plate. Notice the parking meter on the left of the picture. I would have moored here for an hour if I'd had a 50 pence piece. We are approaching Frankton Junction. Off to the left is the start of what is now known as the Montgomery Canal. I filmed down here with my son Henry and Cathy and this beautiful rural canal will be featured in an episode coming soon. Once again, I leapfrog fellow boat tuber Colin Jacks, who was headed down the Montgomery. Some of the rings are missing here. You know, sometimes it's the really little things that amuse me. Which is why I was really tickled by this. It sort of reminds me of the Pink Panther cartoon somehow. Right, enough of that. Let's get cruising. So just passed under bridge 2 west and there's a really handsome farm building just off to the right. Pity about the extension they had put on but the rest of it is really rather pleasant. It's quite interesting to note that the bridge numbers have started again from Frankton Junction um, as in 1 west, 2 west and 3 west etc. Um, whereas the other bridge numbers, we got up to bridge 6970 and the bridge numbers down the Montgomery Canal then continue on 71, 72, 73. So I'm assuming that that's probably because the Frankton uh, the Montgomery, rather, Montgomery Canal was uh, the original planned route for this, for the Elsmere Canal. The Van Gogh Canal was once called the Elsmere Canal. And yes, I assumed correctly. And so, we continue our journey west, across the Shropshire Plains, edging closer to the foothills of Wales. Big fans of yours. What was that YouTube All right. Well, I've just filmed you going tired. <laughs> and it's always nice to come across viewers on the cut.
Watch these house martins drinking on the wing. Fascinating. Almost like Second World War fighter pilots. Surprisingly, I've come across very few boats today. This canal has been so busy since the holiday boats were allowed back on the navigation. Perhaps it's a changeover day. We moored near the Jack Mitten, which was once a famous canal side pub, but judging by the overgrown garden, it is no longer in business. A couple of days later, we were off and approaching New Martin Locks. I have just left New Martin Bottom Lock. New Martin Bottom Lock is the second busiest lock in Britain. A couple of years ago, it had nearly 9,000 trips through it. Um, which is quite a lot, there's about 24 a day and when you think that during the winter not that many boats will be going through that's actually a really huge amount in the summer uh, I walked up there yesterday and um, uh, and there was a huge huge log jam of boats uh, waiting to get in the lock mind you this had been caused by uh, a holiday boater who had managed to get his boat caught over the sill so uh, or the rudder was caught over the sill um, and it bent uh, it bent all his his tiller and his swan's neck so I'm led to believe anyway I'm waiting to go into New Martin top lock there's a holiday boat just coming out and another couple of holiday boats waiting to go through at the top amazingly these are the first locks for 21 miles Now this is a guy in a hurry. 
He was very keen for me to get through the lock as quickly as possible. He became agitated and told me he'd been waiting long enough. Perhaps he hadn't been on holiday long enough or didn't grasp the concept that the canals are the fastest way to slow down. But I guess he only had a week on board his holiday boat and probably had a planned itinerary. That said, New Martin Toplock is actually quite pretty in lovely surroundings and it's worth just taking your time to enjoy it. New Martin Lock's done. I said a cheery goodbye to the man in a hurry. I hope he had a nice holiday. There are two water points just above the lock, so it's time to take on water and survey the landscape. And 40 minutes later, we're off again. Those Welsh hills are clearly visible now, and I've got to admit, I'm beginning to feel a sense of excitement. Has this guy discovered the new world, I wonder? But then, I guess, all of us who live on the canals feel we have done, or at least, in part, rediscovered the old world. And is this the best boat name ever? Moon and Sixpence? Brilliant! A book by Somerset Moon, I believe. Hello, nice paint job. Thank you, yeah, willow boat, snapping. What do you know that we don't? Everybody's carrying wood this way. <laughs> mm, definitive hand gestures to the helmsman. Lion Keys Resort. I moored and took advantage of a spa treatment and facial. Okay, that was a lie. And some more viewers cruise by. We'd had a good chat at New Martin Locks.
Poacher's Pocket pub is off to the right, with plenty of boat moorings. Let's face it, it's a much better place to park than this, on the corner of a blind bend. Now I was a little confused by his hands gestures, so proceeded slowly. Perhaps he was ordering another glass of wine. Chirk Bank. The canal looks onto rooftops as it's cut into the side of the hill overlooking the Kariog Valley. Now watch out for the Hobbit House. There it is, on the left. Clearly, no one has attended to the garden whilst they were away looking for the ring. The fragrance from this garden was tantalising though. Budlier, honeysuckle and all sorts of other niceties. Fantastic. These are the last few furlongs of England. The Welsh border is approaching fast, or not so fast in reality. And this seems to be a nice place to moor up before crossing the Chirk Aqueduct in the morning. And we'll be crossing this spectacle of engineering and the Welsh border and the fabulously impressive Pont Caserte Aqueduct next time. Thanks for watching.